You're listening to the Waypoint TV Podcast Network, brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Hey, it's Chuck with the Survival and Basic Badass Podcast, and I just came from my local Academy Sports and Outdoors store. Dove season is finally here, and Academy Sports and Outdoors store has everything to gear up for the field for less. Don't miss this limited time hot deal. Get up to $10 off select shot shells when you buy 10 boxes or more. Plus, shop a wide selection of shotguns, ammo, decoys, and camo hunting apparel from the brands you trust. Swing by your local store today or shop academy.com. Need it fast? They have one hour curbside pickup so you can load up and load out with ease. Need a hunting license? Pick it up in store while you're shopping. This episode is brought to you by United Airlines. When you want to make the most of your vacation, book with United. They're an airline that cares about your travels as much as you do. United is transforming the flying experience with Bluetooth connectivity, screens, power at every seat, and bigger overhead bins to help fit everyone's bag. And with their app, you can skip the bag check line, get live updates, and more. Change the way you fly. Book your next trip today at united.com. Hello, right. Welcome back to the Survival and Basic Badass Podcast, Kevin and Chuck. Today, well, we're going to talk about prepping for the long term. Right? Like, how how is it really sustainable? You know, a lot of us are like, yeah, I have three months of food or whatever, but okay, then then what? You know, you have to have like a bigger play. Um, I do want to kind of narrow it down and, and focus into the, the nitty gritty, the meat of it, like act- actionable steps. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I know it, it, we, I end up, kind of doing like a broad overview because I'm like, don't forget this. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. And that's so important. But I think there's things that we could be doing that really would be a plan that's focused directly on long-term, but kind of, I want to talk a little bit of kind of even how to get into it, how to, how to start it, how to approach it, I guess is where I want to go with that. And how we can really have a plan that's going to last. And I think a lot of it really comes down to homesteading. I don't know if there's any guaranteed place you could flee to or run. You know, people are like, oh, I'll go to uh, Belize or I'll go to whatever. Well, that may be, but it's like Belize or if Belize turns bad, I'll go to the Philippines or if that turns bad, I'll go to, you know, it could be anywhere. Right. And so you kind of have to, make a stand at some point. I think, I think it comes down to that. I know the uh, Americans in uh, the uh, late 1700s kind of came to a conclusion like that of how long do we keep running? You know, Mm. America was kind of founded with that. Hey, Puritans, Hey, let's escape all this oppressive stuff. We'll go completely to the other side of the world. Yeah. And then we'll work out. And then (laughs) it it didn't work out. And then it's like, oh, maybe we should do something bigger, you know? Maybe mm-hmm. we should uh, take a stand. And and to me, that's always my thing in my heart. But I know that we have let this this country we live in get a little bit corrupted. Um, people have let it go for a little while without maintenance. Um, you know, you'd mentioned last week about, you know, hard times create hard men and, and soft mm-hmm. times create soft men, you know, but so that, that's the thing. I think creating a homestead is really what it gets down to. So that that's where I want to jump in and, and really talk about is how do we lay out a property? You know, I think the first thing that comes to mind is people are like, well, I can't just uproot and move to the country. Right. I mean, that that's the argument you always get, or at right. least if you're in the city talking to your city friends, that's mm-hmm. the argument. Yeah, you know, agree with I you. live out in the sticks. Everyone's like, yeah, I can get a country house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what I see. But um, one is getting property even affordable. Is it attainable? You know, that that's part of it. Uh, I was always when I was young, very big in uh, and young, I mean, you know, 18, 20, 25, you know, in the, those younger years, uh, 
very into rich dad, poor dad, uh, Robert Kiyosaki or right. think and grow rich with uh, Napoleon Hill. And, and, you know, more so like, I think Napoleon Hill with rich or with think and grow rich is, is more the mindset, but uh, Robert Kiyosaki and a lot of his stuff would talk about, Hey, you know, if you, there are ways to get property without having a lot of money. There, there's creative ways. Mm -hmm. And it, it's funny because back in the day, it used to be really easy for uh, for you to go into a lender. And, and it was weird. You just had to know the right guy to ask. If you mm -hmm. found a mortgage broker, they would get anybody financing for anything. And they could write it up. And they'd be like, you don't have a down payment? Don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. Like, because mm -hmm. they would just write it up in a sketchy way. Like, say you wanted a hundred thousand dollar piece of property, they'd basically find a way to write it up that it was a hundred and twenty five thousand dollar piece of property, but you're putting twenty five down, you know, right. on paper, and it would just kind of work out. There was always creative ways to do it. Then after the big scandal of, and that's a whole other episode of how. 2009 collapse happened when they were giving mortgages to anybody who couldn't afford it, mm -hmm. which by the way, we're about to do the same exact thing. This is our new plan of we're going to make it so that everybody gets a mortgage. Right. You know, you know, that's the big thing. I mean, maybe this is the perfect time to buy your homestead is if Kamala wins, Kamala wins, mm -hmm. she's going to be giving you 25,000 which I think is very weird because how is she giving you 25,000 when like, does she have that much money, Kevin? Is she that? She's rich, man. She's, Trump rich. Is rich. she's like, Trump is really rich, but she's given everybody 25,000. She said, I will give you. And I'm like, where are you getting that money? Mm -hmm. So I mean, I that's exciting. These are exciting times when yeah. politicians are just giving away money. Like, I wish I had enough money that I could run for office and then just give it to everybody. Mm -hmm. You're like, you know what? I love you guys and <laughs> I'm going to help out. You know, I'm going to lower prices. And Let I'm me just get my checkbook right now. I got money. I got my purse in the car. It's going to be great. I don't know. Sorry. I didn't want to get lost in the weeds, but you know, that, that stuff just excites me. But actually, I mean, in a way that is a good thing, right? So there's your down payment money. So you could buy, Something now you're like, well, Chuck, Kamala Harris isn't really going to win. Trump's going to win. Well, but you know that if Trump wins, they're just going to overturn it and throw him out for some reason or another. And she'll be back in. You don't even need to worry about it. She got you. She's going to get that 25 grand into your pocket. She's got you covered. So if we're going to buy a homestead, say I, I live in the city, whatever city it is. And, uh, like, you know, I really want to get into homesteading, get out of this rat race. I need to find a piece of property. You know, I've got X amount of money. I could sell my house and I'll have X amount of money. And right. let's see what let's see what I could get. What do I want to find when I'm looking for a, a piece of land? There you go. That's what I'm talking about. So to be honest, right, one, I, I think the number one thing that I look at is it, do they have an HOA? Do they have building coats in that community? Do they have favorable laws that are going to allow me to live the best life I can live? Now, it's almost impossible in America to now find a place where you're not going to pay stupid taxes, right? And I mean, some kind of high amount of property taxes, right? Yes. But Maybe they have high vehicle taxes, but maybe I only have one crappy car on the road and that doesn't even matter. Like I'm not even planning on going into town hardly ever because I'm going to be crazy mountain man and grow a beard. Right. Right. I mean, right. Might maybe you want to go to the, the places that have right. you know, but, a higher state income tax or a higher um, sales tax and lower right. property taxes. Right. Because maybe I'm not buying stuff because I'm growing everything on my homestead. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's an option. So anyway. Think about it like that. But all right. So first is like, do I have like HOA restrictions? You know, I live, dude, there's a town. I live outside of the big town and the town is like 200 people. And the town, you're like, oh, it's country. Everybody's got like a half acre lot. 
in town in the main city strip. It's mm. only got a post office, a hardware store and a car garage. Those are our three mm-hmm. things. And then on the way out, there's a gas station and then like five dollar generals. Cause you know, I mean <laughs> right. they've, been, they've been putting those things everywhere lately. <laughs> those things you can't go a mile because they're like, well, these people walk. I can mm-hmm. tell. So you, like for every five people, we have a dollar general. I mean it might be dollar general, dollar tree or whatever the other one is. Yeah, they got, they got a, there's a couple of them. I know what you're talking about though. There's about five of those dollar things. But I do have a dollar gen, I have two dollar general choices, specifically dollar general within three miles in either direction. So it's like six miles apart. Now is it me, maybe I'm in a weird spot, but is it, is it me or does it seem like everybody that works in the dollar general stores is like serious white trash? Kevin, you're not supposed to say that about my Maybe friend. Maybe it's in my area. I mean, I shop there. I'm like, Kevin, trash. these I'm are my that. friends. But it definitely seems like that's the situation. There is a lack of dental care if you work in <laughs> dental <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah, Kevin, they don't, you're they a horrible, don't have a dental plan. You're a horrible person. I'm just saying that right now. Anyway, so. You want to think about, all right, what I was going to get at is even in the tiny town, you can't have chickens Mm -hmm. and you can't have like all these things are like, so the, my point is you want to actually, Kevin, I think we just lost three listeners while you gave that, (laughs) that our general T thing. So I'm just saying people are worried, but anyway, the, uh, you want to check into what restrictions you might have and, like I said, some things may not be a problem. Obviously, the more government um, control of anything will mean that they're going to be quicker to adapt to new government restrictions in the future, right? Somebody who's more about freedom, you know, you're more likely to get more, not more freedom, but, you know, it's more likely that freedom's going to maintain, right? So we'll, right. we'll go with that. Um so definitely you want to think of that. Uh, I know that there's the uh, Cato Cato Institute actually does an economic freedom of the world. And they actually have a, a state map of the United States where you can look at different states and restrictions and things you might want to choose. Mm-hmm. So anyway, with that, we now found the right state, the right community. Now, like you said, how about the property? What are we looking for? Um, the big thing. If you're thinking about farming, livestock, and self-sufficiency, you're probably thinking, I need water. Water, foundation of life, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Well, maybe that's carbon. I don't know. Anyway, water water is crucial. And so I'm going to look for, do I have a cool stream? Is it on the ocean? Is it something? What kind of water do I have access to? But the big thing, it can just be a good well. And it could be cheap municipal water if that's you know how close you want to be. Obviously, you're not self sufficient if it's community if you're water. relying on community water, right? But again, you decide the line that you're willing to draw. I would think I want a quality well on my property. Now these can be drilled and dealt with, but it's a whole lot better if it's already there, and it's a whole lot better if you know that it's going to be available. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean. If it you find that it has a magic spring on it that's just flowing up water from the earth, even better, you know. Right. But again, it's you you're gonna weigh your price and your budget and and look for something like that. So that I think the minimum, as I mentioned, is about an acre. An acre seems like what you could grow. Obviously, the more land, the better, right? The more privacy right. I can build between me and my neighbors and whatever is kind of cooler to me, you know. Um Now, Kevin had mentioned, you know, you could find like a lot in town, kind of, you know, in the city or whatever, you might be able to find somewhere that you can have a garden and set up things. Now, you do have to worry about municipal governments and restrictions and things like that with the more, you know, the closer you are in town, but you have options. Um, I actually went and tilled a field for a lady in town yesterday, and she's in a a bigger town. um, And... I went down there and she has an acre lot Her son, I think has like some big 18 wheelers or something like that on there that, you know, they use for storage and whatever. 
So she fenced out a big garden plot for herself. It might be two acres. I don't know. And uh, she came up with a big, um, a, a big garden plot and no joke. People are going in and stealing her vegetables when she's not there. What? And I'm like, really? That's like a thing. And people are like, oh, well, is there a fancy development next door? And I'm like, yeah, there is. And they're like, yeah, that makes sense. And I'm like, how? How is that make sense? <laughs> like, who's like, well, you know, I'm down for stealing, but I really like quality foods, you know? <laughs> yeah. I only steal organic. Yeah, exactly. Right. So she, they went in, like wiped out all her green beans, all that kind of stuff. So that's something to be aware of. Right. And she's setting up cameras and whatever. I mean, it's going to work out. But the bottom line is it, you have to think of predators. Right. What kind of predators are going to be getting into my yard? Um, and most predators you can deal with with a shotgun full of rock salt. I'm just just saying. You're just saying <laughs> if your predator is a neighbor. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, all right. So something like that. So you need to think about security. You're going to think about, you know, your, your town municipal laws. You're going to think about water. Now, the next thing you're going to want to think about is the type of soil and sand. Now, obviously you can amend and treat soil and sand and, and clay and whatever it is kind of earth that you have there, but how much work is that going to be? And again, this is just going into what can you afford and what's the best option for you. Um, when I bought my property, we were very focused on gardening and farming. And the wife had gotten some soil samples and actually taken tests, mm -hmm. you know, sent them away to be checked out before we bought the property. Um, that's something you might want to consider. Like you could really, and again, some things are like, oh, you know, this, this doesn't have good pH. This has whatever. Is that something I can easily amend and treat? Or is that something that's going to be a problem? Um, my wife watches, there's a YouTube channel. I mean, I've seen quite a few of them cause we watch things together, but that roots and refuge and this girl, uh, you know, she ended up buying a bunch of bad fertilizer one of the years and it contaminated her soil. And she ended up like part of her thing is like recovering from that. And mm -hmm. her whole focus is how we brought the soil back to good stuff and, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. But you may want to uh, investigate all that beforehand. All right. Now, Moving on to step two. So what kind of things are step three, four? I don't know where we're at. But would you put into the the homestead to actually make it, you know, sustainable, right? So my big thing is, like, if I was starting out young, I would kind of save up that money. It turns out kids now can, like, stay at home with their parents till they're, like, 27, and that's acceptable and normal for society like you just forever like i don't even know but i would save up a little nest egg to buy some property yeah as soon as i could get property i would buy some and i would one even if you just buy it and hold it then i would like and again you want to get a piece of property that's worth developing right it's okay to move and and go later but you don't want to put a lot of effort into something well this is what i could afford and I understand just wanting something, but make sure it's something like at least an acre and something that you can do stuff, right? Next, part two, I would just buy the property. And I mean, to me, if I'm young kid, I'd just live on it. I'm assuming if you're past young kid age and just starting out with money, I, I'm assuming if you're past that, you probably have enough if you sold your house to have some equity to go buy something with already a structure on it and some stuff going on. But if I was starting out from scratch, the little nest egg, and I'd be willing to live in a tent or a camper and I'd start out there and then I'd get a well put on it. And then I'd look at solar. How am I going to set that up? You know, D then I'd work out a septic. Um, you know, ideally you find a property with like a crappy trailer on it. Cause then you got the well and septic and the electric hookup already there. Um, but you know, who knows? And you know, there's a lot of crappy trailers that, you know, you're starting there, but you can expand with a lot of the heavy infrastructure already in place. 
something to look for. You do you, right? Um, next, and I would like build up. I would just start adding things. Hey, what do we need? You know, being able to go to the bathroom is huge, right? So you might start out with just an outhouse, but then, all right, now we have a shower and real plumbing. Metal buildings are like nothing. Um, mm -hmm. You can buy a metal building for like 10 grand and then go to the next thing. You know, it might not be the size of the house that you want or whatever. And you're saying, oh, 10 grand's a lot. Well, yeah, but remember Kamala Harris is giving you 25. So you're already, saying, you're already you know, there, man. No, but they'll finance that. And again, I would try not to finance things. I'd try and do everything for cash. Yeah. Again, that year or two of building up and saving when you're living with mom and dad, I'm just saying, or like I said, I think most people established in life probably have 25 grand equity in their house that they could just sell it and start over. Right. Um, again, assuming you don't already have, I'm talking about from ground zero. Uh, then I would set up some kind of, I, I would set up electricity. So some kind of solar setup and something where I could be sustainable and completely self-sufficient with that. Um, I would be working on somewhere safe to store my supplies where they're not going to be overridden with mice and rodents and things like that, right? Like a quality shed. That's not a big deal, right? It's not that hard. We can get there. Then, and I would keep going. So now, assuming money's not an object, like what is the end goal? What kind of, what are things do I want on my homestead? Um, I'm going to probably want some kind of livestock, right? I'm going to want things like that. I'm going to want to be able to have a garden. Um, I'm going to need to be able to water this garden. Um, I'm going to want uh, livestock. Let's talk about that. So we could do like pigs, goats. Those are reasonably easy. They're kind of more adventurous than people start out. I think people always start with chickens, right? You get eggs right away. That's always the, yeah, that's always the go-to. Start with Butchering chicken. chickens is pretty easy, kind of. You know, it can definitely be done. Um, if you're not willing to butcher a chicken, maybe homesteading isn't right for you, okay? That's not, yeah, it's not it, the right move. Maybe get a good job. Um, yeah. All right, so next, I got chickens. Then I think the next easiest thing, rabbits are pretty freaking easy. Mm -hmm. um, Rabbits are meat that keep reproducing. They are reasonably inexpensive. Um, chickens, not so bad for me, and they do reproduce on their own. There are some tricks to getting there on your own with getting, you know, self-sufficient where you're not buying chicks at tractor supply or whatever. Although they're not too expensive to do that either. You buy it at the right time. But, and, you know, talk to your neighbors, get to know your community and be reliant on your neighbors. That's, I think a big thing. Uh, yeah. I know, I know like just dealing with the people, you know, friends and, and family that there's a lot of people that are, oh, I have too many chickens. You want to take a couple of chickens. You want to, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not a huge expense. The huge expense is getting prepared to have chickens. You know, the huge expense is the coop, the, the setup, the chickens aren't, aren't the issue. And it doesn't have to be as pretty as some people, you know, make it out to be. You can go pretty simple. Um, one of the things I have uh, some books that I really love from back in the day. Uh, one is uh, the Have More Plan that I looked online on Amazon. It was like 12 bucks. It's from 1973. And they talk about how you can be self-sufficient on an acre and, you know, grow your own stuff and whatever. Uh a book that's actually a lot more thorough, but a little more expensive is uh, The Self-Sufficient Life and How to Live It. This yeah. one, I looked, if you're just looking at the cover going, oh, that's it. That one looked like it was like 75 bucks now, but there's a $25 option. It's by uh, John Seymour. Just anything by John Seymour, Self-Sufficient Life and How to Live It. That one cover takes you through the butchering process how to lay out your property, how to, you know, cycle through crops. You know, you don't want to grow the same thing in the same spot every year, that kind of stuff. He takes you through that, how to build quality fencing, how to, you know, secure your livestock, how to deal with predators, how to, he has all kinds of basics that just take you through. Um, I think we did an episode on like setting up a log cabin or building a log cabin, things like that. 
And I, there's a whole bunch of books on building your own structure too that are, get me super excited and whatever. <laughs> if you can get somewhere without building codes, um, you can do amazing things. But as far as setting up your homestead and building animal shelters and that kind of thing, and on the cheap, using materials that you have around, mm -hmm. um, that self-sufficient life book is excellent and can really, you know, help you out. Another one that's, I found super, super awesome and exciting is the secret garden of survival, uh, by, uh, Rick Austin there. He, uh, he, he's guy who does prepper camp. And, uh, that was actually my introduction to him was the book, you know, I, and he was on like doomsday preppers or something, but I had seen the book and then checked him out on doomsday preppers. And I was like, Oh, that's pretty cool. You know, he, he had, uh, lots of ways to like integrate. He was kind of like that three sisters kind of thing where plants supporting plants and building together. He's got a lot of neat stuff in there. That book was a little expensive, like 29 bucks, but it's got the pictures and the detail that it actually pretty helpful, you know, gets you there. Mm -hmm. Um, I would kind of start to look and, and check out like fantasize with these books about what you want. It'll kind of give you a better feeling of before I picked out the property. Now, again, you already have a property. No problem. You just start to, how do I integrate it? But if you knew what you wanted to lay out and what was going to be important, like having water near the garden is a big thing, right? A lot of right. people who are like, oh, I made the garden way back in the corner so it'd be secret, but now I don't have water over right. there. You know, that's a, people don't think of these things sometimes. Um, is it going to be near the house where I can keep predators away, right? Like that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, you know, the wife went out yesterday and was like, oh, there's a giant deer standing in the middle of the garden and just hopped out like nothing. And I'm like, yeah, they do that. And we have a pretty high fence, but yeah, who knows, right? But that that's what predators do. Um, so you want to think about like, you're going to want a smokehouse. Uh, we have a place like set up for like a butcher shop, right? Like you're still going to have to, even if it's multiple use spaces, you still need to think about how you're going to run your operation. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't mean you need a designated butcher shop and a designated, you know, whatever, but you may need a room that you use for, this is our kitchen. We use your canning. We use your butchering. We use your whatever. I don't know that I'd want canning and butchering in the same place. Cause one, you're trying to keep super clean. One, you're trying to, you mm -hmm. know, get a little messy in, but what I'm saying is you need to kind of integrate things and, and work together. Uh, five acres and in independence, another book that I actually have and uh, is pretty good. Slow burn recommended that one. Um, there is uh, a lot of good information out there, but the thing is you need to think about all the practical things. Now, one of the cool things about the modern world is after COVID so many people are able to work from home and take their lifestyle back a little bit. Uh, there was a, a book, uh, Tim Ferriss, uh, what, what's his book? He has a uh, four hour work week. He, he has a book there and it's kind of about how you can get more efficient and more, you know, sustainable and, and with your job where you can free up time. Now I'm not trying to get you into the whole self-help thing and whatever. It, that's not my point. My point is there are ways, there are tools out there to help you string stream down your life where you can thin it out into something where it's a little more easy. I'm not saying you have to be laptop billionaire or something. I'm just saying there are ways. Now there are also ways to make money in the country, right? You can buy a tractor and cut firewood for people. You can get a sawmill for three grand that you can cut boards. You know, there's things you can do on your property, but you're not going to live your $150,000 lifestyle while you're work living off the land. But if you're willing to focus on, hey, we bought a piece of land in the middle of nowhere, so it was super cheap, and we just need to put clothes on everybody and stay warm and whatever, it's doable. 
Mm-hmm. It's just maybe not doable with a new iPhone every three years and a leased car. Right. Now, again, you could set up the job that's remote and streamlined that you could do the car, but it's it's how much time you want to focus on family and and you know, off-grid living and sustainable and nutrition and value, not feeding your family poison. As much as you want to focus on that versus the other, you need to decide what's right for you and how much time and effort you're willing to work. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, is that your take on it, Kevin? Or how are you? Yeah, I mean, it, it really, uh, you know, running a homestead or, or, you know, just keeping animals in a garden. It's, work. it's a lot of work. You've got chores in the morning before you go to work and you got chores when you get home. So you want to streamline as much as possible. My recommendation would be throw your TV in the garbage. But I mean, different strokes for different folks, I guess. I just watched uh, a movie. I think it was called Great Hands. And it was the Ben Carson story. Oh, yeah. And it was funny because I had seen a clip on, you know, how we watch scroll through Facebook or TikTok or some mm-hmm. with videos. Right. And. A video came up and it was a picture of his mom, like working as a cleaning lady. And she sees a guy who's super successful, who she's cleaning for. And she's like, well, you have this huge library. How many books of these have you read? And he's like, oh, probably like 80% of them. And she just goes home and looks at her kids. And it's like, you know what? You can each watch one show a a week and that's it. And, you're going to spend the time at the library and start writing book reports. And they're like, no. And she's like, (laughs) yeah, this is how it's going to be. And she starts out with like two shows a week. And they're like, that sounds horrible. What? how would we even do that? And then when they start reading, they're like, oh, it's awesome. And both become very successful people coming from struggling in school. Mm -hmm. And it was that decision to stop watching TV. Now, again, I'm not telling you how to live. I don't really care what you do. You make you happy, right? You know, I want you to listen to at least one podcast a week. I mean, that's that's, right. that's where I would draw the line, right? Mm-hmm. One podcast a week and, you know, get all your information right there. That's the key. You don't worry about it. Me and Kevin will do the research so you don't have to. No, I don't know. You guys do you, right? That That's not my point. I'm not telling anybody how to live. But I do know that in my personal life, I waste a lot of time that I could be devoting to other stuff. And staring at TV and screens is a big part of it. However, the upside, I will say, almost 99% of all TV or podcast listening I do is while I'm at work and getting paid for it. (laughs) So, you know, hey, you do you, right? I mean, you got to fill the time somehow, right? Mm -hmm. So if you could work out a job like that, I'd recommend it. Uh, I'm just saying. Like, actually, all my podcast editing and my happens while I'm at work. I mean, my boss probably shouldn't hear about this, but I'm just saying. That's when it happens. Like, when I go to work today, the the computer that I'm, I'm recording this on right now is going with me. And the editing will happen while I'm there. And... You know, all that'll get done. So you may want to find a way to work that into your lifestyle. I do, however, work way too much that keeps me away from my property and doing the stuff that I want to do. So again, there is always things, new projects you could be doing on the homestead. But so we talked about uh, farm animals, pigs, goats, chickens, um, ducks you can do. They're kind of messy. I did turkeys this year. Turkeys were a big pain in the butt. They smelled and they were expensive for me to raise. Even my buddies who did them for like the fourth year in a row and tried to do them efficient. They're still over $75 a piece to raise is what he experienced. Mm. I'm sure there's a way with scraps that you can figure out how to do it. Whatever you get them on a natural diet that you're growing and whatever. But I know if you're doing it with store-bought feed, you're really not raising a turkey to 25 pounds without you know, 22 pounds, whatever, without like 75 bucks in feed. Now you might be able to get 40 bucks in feed and raise it to 17 pounds or something. I don't know, but you get the idea, right? It's all relative. 
Uh, so think about that. I know pigs, it's a lot easier to feed scraps, that kind of stuff. Goats, it's a lot easier to get away with them eating off the land kind of thing. Rabbits, uh, pretty good if you're efficient on actually butchering them as soon as they're ready. Um, and you're willing to collect some greens around the yard and stuff like that. You can get pretty cheap rabbit meat and pretty cost efficient. But if you're just going to be store-bought hay and store-bought um, feed, then it gets a little hairy, like probably $6 a pound or something if you're, you know, it, not not that much, maybe 4 bucks a pound. But mm -hmm. there's still a little bit of work. So something good there. Kevin, any crops? Like, I mean, I, I didn't want to get too in the weeds on what you should grow because – like I said, these books just lay it out. Like the have right. more plan, it has an exact year planning schedule. And it's like for a family of four, you need to do exactly this. You need so many carrots. You need so many turnips. You need to, now obviously you pick and choose what your family likes to eat or whatever, but there's a lot of, you know, root vegetables and, and seasonal planting that you can do. Um, yeah, and that would be something that I would uh, prioritize is is something that you can um, you're harvesting at different times. You know, greens are good for that spinach and, and lettuces because they they grow fast and and you can replant, you know, two or three times a year. Uh, cucumbers, same way. But also don't don't grow stuff that you're not going to eat because my neighbor my neighbor sends over, you know, two or three eggplants a week and. I don't eat eggplants and they don't eat eggplants. Why are you growing eggplants? Nobody likes egg. They, they taste terrible. They're awful. They're the worst vegetable. My wife, dude, we have had eggplant in like every meal. Now, luckily I work at dinner time, so I'm not home eating. So you dinner. don't have to deal with but it. But I would say four out of seven days a week, there is some kind of secret eggplant mixed in mm -hmm. to whatever they're cooking. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, secret eggplant. There's a lot of zucchini. Now there are fun things with zucchini, but basically it's like, Oh, if you fry it, then it doesn't taste so bad. But right. There's but a lot of things where you're like, if you fry it, it doesn't yeah, taste so bad. So bad. You, know? you know, if I was going to eat worms, that would be, I would fry them, you know, right. now, fry long, it grease. exactly. Long-term, uh, fruit trees, bees, you know, these are the things, nut trees, uh, now that I'm down in the South, nut trees are a big thing. Now, mm -hmm. the big thing with trees is the, they take time to start producing. You know, it's going right. to be like three, four years before you're getting a significant harvest, depending on the trees that you buy, right? I mean, you right. can buy pretty established trees. Uh, if you can find a property that's already got trees, you're way ahead of the game, you know, established trees. That was like one of the things I hated about leaving New York was I had finally gotten my trees to where they're starting to produce, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure the guy went and cut them all down because they were like in the middle of the yard, but you know, right. whatever. But I'm like, Oh, I had gotten all these trees, you know, growing and th that's how you end up. But yeah, trees are awesome because they do work without any effort, right? The first mm -hmm. couple of years, you got to really be maybe on top of watering them or whatever, depending on your environment. You know, when things start to turn crappy and are hot too long. But so having, like I said, a good layout of your property, buy one of these books, go through it, think about it. Uh, we did an episode a while back on laying out your homestead. It was something about the soil that I did the, the extra show. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a guest on, uh, I'll try and put a link to it. I forgot about the name is, is eluding me at the moment, but uh, if you want to get deep into soil and, and that kind of stuff, I'll put a link in the show notes to that one. Um, but lay out your property and plan ahead is what I would say. But fruit trees, nut trees, bees, because you need some kind of sugar stuff. Um, but and think about the food. Think about what your family eats and what you can grow. Think about how you're going to rotate stuff. You know, you change crops each year. You don't grow the same thing in the same spot. But, you know, there's some things you can repetitively plant. Think about how you do cover crop in the winter. Think mm -hmm. about, you know, getting the implements. But it can all be done in stages. You don't have to go from zero to 100 in day one. 
but it's cool if you have the property and the plan at day one, and then you can just keep adding on by importance for your family. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the long-term prepping stuff of, you know, Hey, do I already have some kind of long-term food storage? Do I have a way to secure it? Did I pick out a property that's going to be overrun by gangs in two weeks? You know, all this depends on how close you are to the city, but it, it depends on your budget, you know, what you're willing to give up to, you know, how remote you're willing to be you're going to get cheaper and cheaper property and less restrictive government rules the further outside the city you are. Mm -hmm. But, and, you know, and it might free up your budget, but again, you're not able to earn money like you'd want to be. You know, we looked at a property in uh, like Boone County, Tennessee, right? Or in the Boone National Forest or something. And this thing wasn't near anything, but it was like an awesome hillside. I think they probably got hammered in the in Helene here, mm -hmm. to be honest. Gotten it. But the way it was, this property had like 30, 40 fruit trees on it. It was like a trailer, but it was like 39 grand. It was totally private. The guy had the whole homestead going on, and it would have been awesome. And I'm like, oh, I could go there, pay cash, be king. Just move right in. Yeah. Just move right in. But I'm like, but I'd never earn money again. Mm -hmm. And I still have to appease the whole family, the kids, the wife, everybody has to be, you know, you don't want to give up life if that's what you want. But if your family goal is, hey, let's live like little house on the prairie and have our own thing, then that would have been sweet. You know, mm -hmm. it just, right. you have to decide the sacrifices you're willing to make as a family and go to it from there. So that's what I got. I think that's how the direction you'd want to move if you were looking for a sustainable life. And I would say when it comes time to vote, vote for freedom. That's all. You know, again, I, I know that freedom's not on the ballot. I, I've seen what's out there. But what I would tell you is way out. What's going to give me the most choices and the most free stuff? And I'm not sure that the answer is, well, if I had 25 grand, I could go buy freedom. But maybe, maybe it is. Maybe I don't know. It is. You Who decide knows? what's right for you, right? Yeah. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. I'm here to give you options. And that's what it comes down to. And hopefully share some of my knowledge of things I've experienced along the way of making my own homestead, you know, because I do. I have a homestead of my own, but you know, it, it isn't exactly little house on the prairie, you know, it, it's, and my neighbor apparently is going to be like an ATF agent. So, you know, we all make mistakes, right? You know, who knows about the property? You can only do what you're going to do. But with that, I would say you have questions, concerns, email us at preppingbadass at gmail.com. Uh, make sure you like, and subscribe, leave comments, stay safe. And we will talk to you guys next week. Mm -hmm.